Hi, welcome to Proving Cures. I am your host, Sarah McLeod, and today is Tuesday, December 3rd, 2019. Um, as many of you may know, yesterday was, no, not yesterday, two days ago, was considered World AIDS Day. And two days ago last year, I believe was when I published my video um, on Nigella Sativa, uh, Black Seed, being uh, proven in a clinical study to cure, for lack of a better word, to cure um, HIV. That video so far has gotten 70,000 views. I thank everyone who took the time to listen to the study. Um, and I thank all the people who left messages, you know, claiming that they're, they've used it with positive results, not just for HIV, but for other issues as well, um, for engaging in discourse with people you don't know to make them also feel better about giving Black Seed a try. Um, approximately four months after my doing that video, one of you guys contacted me and let me know of an, another study about another plant that has been clinically proven as well to cure HIV. And um, it took me a long time to review the data, I would say approximately seven to eight months. Um, predominantly because I wanted to be able to focus my attention on the Black Seed Study. I wanted to be able to answer those questions. I was getting lots of emails about it, tons of emails about it, um, with you know different people sharing their experiences with me, and I really needed to be able to just focus. Well, the buzz has kind of died down a bit about Black Seed. A lot of people know about it. But this study is also equally beneficial, if not more beneficial. Um, the doctor who studied this particular compound, which I'm, is, this video is, I'm just basically gonna talk about the compound itself as an intro video. And then the next video after this one, I'm going to talk about the HIV study. Um, but the doctor who, who studied the compound is Brazilian, Dr. Paulo, I do not want to mispronounce his name, and I probably will. Um, he spearheaded something called the Mutamba Project, in which he studied um, a plant known as Mutamba for 10 years and found that it was um, helpful. I'm going to give you all the information about the study and his name and where it's published and all that good stuff in the next video. But before jumping on that, I want to discuss the plant because the plant is indigenous to, to just basically one part of the world. And that is Central and South America. Countries like Brazil, Mexico, Peru, those are the countries um, in which it grows. And because of that, a lot of people who aren't from those countries have never heard of it. I had never heard of it. And I thought before I, I dive into the study, and then you're like, what is this? What, I've never heard of this. I would at least give an intro just to talk about the plant itself. Okay, so the plant, I'm getting all this information, I'm telling you where I'm getting it from, first of all, from a, a site that calls itself the Tropical Plant Database. So it is a repository of information about tropical plants that a lot of people have not heard of. And it is rain-tree.com. Okay. And the plant is called Mutamba, M-U-T-A-M-B-A. And it has several other names. In case you've never heard of Mutamba, you may have heard of Mutambo, Mbira, Mbiru, West Indian Elm, Guasima, Guasimo, Guasima de Caballo, Aquiche, Ajia, Cimarona, Guasuma, Bolaina, Atadijo, Ibixuma, Camba Aca, Bay Cedar, Bois de Home, Bois de Home, that sounds French. I, I don't know how to pronounce French very well. Bois Dome, Bois de Tre, Homme d'Amérique. Um, those are the, the various names it goes by. 
depending on the country um, it, it's growing in. Okay, and it has been used in traditional medicine for, I'm assuming, thousands of years. Um, and because of its being used in traditional medicine for so many years, for so many different reasons, uh, researchers in those countries embarked on animal and cellular studies just to see if they would get the same responses to the plant in sick animals and diseased cell lines. So I'm going to just give you a rough overview. In Mexico, for instance, the bark of this tree is boiled in water to aid in childbirth. Um, it is used for gastrointestinal pain, asthma, diarrhea, dysentery, wounds, and fevers. Um, Mayan healers in Guatemala boiled it to treat stomach inflammation and regular stomach aches. Um, indigenous people from the Amazon rainforest have also used it for asthma, bronchitis, diarrhea, kidney problems, and syphilis. Um, they also use a bark decoction topically means it goes on top of the skin to treat baldness, leprosy, dermatosis, that's probably dermatosis, and other skin conditions. Um, it has also been used in Belize for these same reasons. I don't have my mouth, so I'm using my fingers and I'm trying not to make the scroll bar run away with me, so I'm, I'm going kind of slowly and I apologize for that. Um, in Peru, it's been used to treat kidney disease, liver disease, once again, dysentery. Guatemala, it's been used for those same things. Um, and a lot of uh, skin diseases, skin eruptions, dermatitis, irritations, and so forth. Um, as, like I said, as a result of these traditional uses, clinical researchers have gotten involved to see if they could replicate some of those same uh, results in clinical studies. But like I said, these studies have been predominantly done in animals and uh, cell lines. Um, let's see here. So the first published study was done in animals consisting of rats, rabbits, guinea pigs, cats, and insects. And in that study, uh, it, the Mutamba was reported to lower the heart rate and blood pressure, relax smooth muscles, and stimulate the uterus of those animals, the uteri, I guess, of those animals. Um, subsequently, eight different studies from 1987 to 2003, uh, which utilize various leaf and bark extracts, have clinically demonstrated antibacterial activity in vitro against several disease-causing pathogens, including Bacillus, Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, E. coli, and Neisseria gonorrhea. Um, that's probably why it's so helpful for, for stomach inflammation and stomach pains as well. Um, in a recent 2003 study, it was found to have antioxidant effects. And in 1995, in an in vitro study, Mutamba had demonstrated antiviral activity against herpes, herpes simplex type one virus. I know in the past I've had a few people ask me um, if I could find some information about a cure for herpes and I haven't been lucky. Now that I've found that this cellular study was done, then maybe I can f dig some more and find some more information about applying Mutamba to, uh, to uh, the curing of, of herpes virus. Now, with that being said, that this plant has so many beneficial effects, it obviously affects a lot of uh, aspects of, of pharmacology in the body. And it, should be, it shouldn't be looked at, in my opinion, my personal opinion, as um, an innocuous, you know, when I say innocuous, I mean as something that that's just perfectly safe to take just because it's natural. I definitely would not say that. It's something that can lower your blood pressure, 
is not necessarily perfectly safe to take. If you are somebody who takes blood pressure medication, that is something for you to take into consideration. It is something, it, it has stimulates the uterus. So if you have heavy cramps during, if you're premenstrual and you have, if you're premenopausal, I'm sorry, and you, you have heavy cramps, this is not something you probably wanna take when you're on your period. Um, this is definitely not something to take if you are pregnant. I can probably cause abortions, spontaneous abortions. Um, it is a muscle relaxant. So that is also something to take into consideration before you, I don't know, maybe you have to drive or do something uh, that requires your, your, strong, your strength and attention. Keep that in mind that this is a muscle relaxant. Um, and it may be dangerous to um, unless you take it first and see how much of it you can actually tolerate. So these are the things that I wanted to share before I dive into the study and you get excited and you run off and you take something like this and you have a heart condition, you have issues with uh, your blood pressure and so on. Those are the things that I wanna discuss that it has many, many uses. And um, you, you need, if you're sick in some area that you don't know about and it you take this you take this plant or you drink the tea from the leaves or something like that and you start to feel sick because normally with herbs when you first take them they're attacking whatever your issue is you don't feel well at first so you might think to yourself oh my god i'm dying or this isn't working for me at least with this intro video you can say well sarah did warn me that this could happen you might want to carve out a period in your day, a time of day, or just take it on the weekend when you first take it, just to see how your body adjusts to it, see how it makes you feel. Don't just think it's something you can take harmlessly and then go on about your day because you might end up sick as a result. And I don't want that to happen. Um, there are traditional preparations here, but there those preparations are based on, you know, taking it for asthma or something else. And this video series is going to be about taking it for HIV, okay? So I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you have any further questions, I'm actually going to put a link to this website in the, in the discussion section so you can check it out for yourself and see all the, you know, the um, conditions it has been used to treat. And um, do you can also, you know, do your own research. All right, so look out for part two of this video where I'm actually gonna dive into the study done by our Brazilian doctor. I feel terrible for not knowing his last name. Don't shoot me. Dr. Paulo Guevara or something. I don't know. I'll know for sure <laughs> in the next video. Okay, thank you. Um, and please like, share, and subscribe. Later.